have a short-ish, probably not that short, last call game start video for you. Today, I'm going to take open the stream because, oh my god, there's nothing in it. Okay. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pico PSU, otherwise known as the Dream PSU, and the GD RAW, or the GD EMU device. Both mods you can do yourself for the Dreamcast. And now what's great about both of these are that they're both really plug and play. All you have to do is just open up the system, take out a couple uh, couple screws, take the old thing out, put the new thing in. Now the it's hard to see the power supply, especially because it's like this translucent plastic guard here. Well, it's right there. Basically what it does is, instead of the stock power supply, which is about this long, goes about mo like three quarters of the way down the system, about an inch or so wide. This is about mm, a couple inches long. There's a cord, obviously, that goes to the back. And is much quieter, much cooler, much lighter. When you do these, both these mods, you realize Dreamcast loses about half of its weight. So, the quick and dirty review for this is because there really isn't a ton to say about it is it's really simple. You just take a power supply and immediately you'll get the, you'll have to get a bigger power supply like this, but they're not hard to find. I think I got one for like 15 bucks off Amazon for this. The big thing here is, of course, the GDEMU. Now, I will have to admit, this is actually a Chinese clone I got off eBay, which was $70 when I paid for it. Well, actually, I paid $60 because there was a sale that day, but whatever. Basically, I would have gotten an official one, but they're never in stock. Like, the guy that makes them, and I get it, it's one guy who makes them himself, but... When they're in stock, they're in stock for just such a short amount of time. I need to cut that fingernail. That by the time I realize they're in stock and go to the website, it's like, oh no, pre-orders are sold out. Like I would have paid the regular price, which is that, which is, I think either one fit like one fifty, but I'm not hundred percent certain. But I just never could get one. So eventually, I was like, okay, I'm never gonna be able to just get one. I'll get one off of, off of eBay from China. And then this is a Samsung 32GB SDHC card, and that's a big thing with these, because even though this is a Chinese, it's a pretty realistic clone, so it follows the same problems. Originally I had a 128GB SDHC card in here. Unfortunately, SDHC cards don't work. You have to use SDH, SDHC, but not XC. I said X. 128 was the XC, which does not work. The HCs will, I think they only go up to like 64, but I only had a, this 32. So let's power this system on, I'm going to go plug it this on my tripod, and take a look and I'll show you how it works. And it boots up the same, because of that power supply. Okay. Okay, I just had it on a little while ago, so... Don't have to worry about that. So this is the GD menu, which you have to load onto that SD card. Basically, let's see if you can read this from here. Basically, each folder is number. You have to put a bunch of different folders on here. Yeah, it just doesn't really want to load up or focus, I should say, that are all, no, so you have to just put the folder with the GD menu in 0-1, because that will be the first thing it loads up. You can press that button to switch this on the fly, which is, they say is really good for uh, multi-game discs, like Skies of Arcadia 1, this 1 and 2 right over here. There we are. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show a few other games that I have loaded on here. 
since you can only do like a 32 gig, you can't really load every single game up in here. And this folder is actually currently empty. Because another thing is when if you when a lot if you download the games, a lot of times they will be um, they'll be zipped because they'll be about like half the size. You have to unzip them because it won't read the read them off as zip files. It's a pain in the butt, but what are you gonna do? So let's see what I'm gonna. Well, first I'll show you. Okay, I'll show you the Dreamcast generator because I just think the generator games were were discs were actually really nice little things. And what this is doing now is completely rebooting the system while it thinks that the Dreamcast generator disc is in here. It's not. It, there is no disc in there, but it thinks it is, and that is completely. I actually played the had the generator two disc as like my my very first thing. So yeah, I'll play like these. Uh, let's see. This is a great selection of classic, of like early release games. I'm just gonna play a little bit of Monaco because I feel like it. Now one other thing is when you do the soft reset, which is A, B, X, Y, and start. Some people apparently never know, never knew that, even though it says it in every single Dreamcast manual. But whatever. Um. Yeah, whatever. Um. When you do the software stuff, first it may go back to the main to the menu of the uh, the system. Where the hell did I? Oh, I need to go to okay. It may go back to the first thing of the game, but usually I need to turn the flashlight off. That's probably what this problem was. But usually, if it or but or if you press it from there, it'll usually go back to the Dreamcast menu. Here, it won't do that. It'll go to the GD EMU menu, which is a useful thing. I'm just gonna do one lap here. I don't think I've actually I have Mon I've had Monaco GP for like ever, no! but I don't think I've ever actually played it. So another thing I'm gonna show you is that it actually will play. Uh, import games with no issues whatsoever, and it'll even um, it'll even do other do um a little bit it'll even do games that don't run natively in VGA in VGA, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's go. Um, so that's a pretty cool nifty feature. Okay. Okay, see that that was I did the soft reboot and now I'm pretty sure it's loading up the GDEMU. I didn't have to turn the system off and turn it back on. There was no funny business. You can even see my reflection. All I did was just press the, the soft reset. So what was the game? Okay, that was it. Aqua GT over here. You can see, I'm not sure how well you can see, over in the corner, and now it's completely out of focus again. Jesus. It does not like, this does not like videotaping screens. Okay, well that's more in focus. You can see it says what region the game is, whether it's VGA, the disc, like disc number, so like... The, so like Skies Arcade is one of two, two of two for, but we're not doing that right now. The date I think that's the release date and not like the date that the game was hacked or whatever, because all of these are downloaded because ripping your own G GD ROM games is a pain in the butt. So 
This is Aqua GT, which is a European exclusive. It was never released in the U.S. on anything. And it's also an obscenely expensive game to get. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, like, if you want to buy a copy of this game for the Dreamcast, it'll run you 150 bucks, Which is... A lot of money. Now, one thing, I have, one issue I have with this game is that um, it's very hard to um, it's very hard to finish a a level because the time limit is really Jesus. That just does not want to. Okay, there we go. The time limit is, is fixed. You can't... The only way you can change it is by changing the number of laps. You can change the difficulty. I can't change the maximum time. This is one of those games that uses A. And also, the things look like they're rejects from Hydro Thunder. Which is kind of what this game is. I'm pretty sure... I Any, any like European people can correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that this was a. This seems like it was a budget title. Uh, a bit. Especially because this red one here looks like a reject from Extreme G. But yeah, if you if you're if you want to play a a water racing game on the Dreamcast, this is not your best one. Just pick up Hydro Thunder. It's not that difficult, not that hard to find. And yeah, there's no issues whatsoever. Admittedly, this these are mostly GD-ROM rips, and it plays GD -ROM, GDI and CDI discs, or images, I should say. And basically, the only difference between those is, like, the CD ones are usually compressed to fit on a compact disc, which is a little smaller than, a, than a, the GD-ROM itself. But the GD-ROMs are just straight rips of the actual thing, the actual original games themselves. I'm just going to quit, because I don't really feel like playing this anymore. I've always had issues getting this to get Okay, I think, there we go. So, finally we're going to do one, dream, one Japanese Dreamcast game, just to prove those work, because I don't have any homebrew ones loaded up on here, even though I probably should have, but with the recent issues with downloading websites, it's really hard to find them. Let's play Yu Suzuki Gameworks, which I've actually never played this one of. I, only, I played a different game to test this out. But this is another game that's very hard and very expensive to find, because it was actually included with a book. And, but the game has... Um, like, emulated versions of various games that Yu Suzuki worked on. Mostly older, older arcade games. So, like, a lot of them are the same ones you found in Shenmue. Which is also another game you could play with this and do the tapping thing, but... So, there we are, Yu Suzuki. Volume 1. There was no Volume 2. Never put Volume 1 in the thing. So, let's... Power Drift. I don't think Power Drift was actually in, in there. Hang On. I think Hang On was in there, I know. Space Area, I know, was in there. Afterburner 2, I don't know if Afterburner 2 was in there. And then there's Outrun. So let's play Outrun. Plus Start button. As you can see, this loads up just fine. Load times are seem to be about the same as a regular uh, Dreamcast would be. But again, there's and the and the thing is, you don't you're not gonna have any issues with like how with like getting this to run it to run and hopefully if they could the the only real problems I have with the actual with the GD the MU are twofold. One, it's almost impossible to get a real one, which is why I had to get this one from China. And two, I really wish that they that they could, that the guy could make SD8 XC support 
hopefully that's on the horizon in later versions of the system. But if you're inter inter if you're interested in modding your console or something like that, then this is a great way to do it because really, it's so easy. It takes almost it takes really like no skill to do. Though I had to spend more time formatting the, the SD card for this than I did actually installing it. So I'm just going to play through this game, and then that'll be all for this episode of Last Call Games. And I will put a uh, link to the people who are making the Dream PSU in the, de in the description of this video. So I'll put that in the description, because you can't... I bought this from Indiegogo, because I, I backed it. However, you can pre-order... New the next run of them, and then you'll be able and then you can, you know, run a redo, breathe new life into your Dreamcast, and the GD ROM really if if you care the GD EMU, if you can find one, it's gdemu.wordpress.com is the official website. If he if you get lucky and he has them open, go for it. If not, just search for it on eBay. I'm not going to put in a listing for that. Ebay, AliExpress, you know, some site like that. So, that's it for this episode of Last Call Games. And, oh, that did a... Oh, my God. Uh, see, I always have issues with them. There we go. So, that's it for this episode of Last Call Games. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll be back next time with whatever on earth I feel like doing then.